Hello viewer, welcome back to 54A at last. Um, if you've been wondering where my videos are the last week or two, I haven't been putting them up. I've been a bit busy in the workshop trying to rearrange things and uh, make simplify things a bit. And uh, making things simple takes a lot of work. But um, I'll quickly show you what I've done and what I've, what I've bought a few little extras. This is what I've been doing for the past week or so. Uh, it doesn't look a lot, just a few new shelves. But it's a big improvement. I can see everything now. I can get to everything a lot easier. The top shelf there is a lot wider now. So I haven't got to stack too many tins on top of each other. I can see exactly what I've got. My polishes, the Yorkshire grit, the uh, finishing oils, etc. The shelf below, I've got all my little stains in the bottles there. Uh, below that, space for my bowl saver at long last. Great tool that is. Um, and all my other power tools uh, that I use regularly are all now easy to get at. All my clamps are up there, nicely stowed out of the way. But again, easy to get at. Now here, Zoom in a bit for you. What a bargain. <laughs> I got uh, an email off a place that quite local that was closing down. And they were only open for a few hours last week. So of course, you know, it would have been rude not to go and have a look. I got the two stains there. Three quid a bottle instead of nearly 12 quid. The tight bond, two quid instead of eight quid. Uh, superior Danish oil, two quid instead of what's nearly seven quid. And then um, lots of little odds and ends. <laughs> Executive pen kits, uh, three for 14 quid. Now they're about eight or nine quid each at least. A uh, little goblet polish and mop salt and pepper kit a couple of quid each I've also bought some uh, thread chasers oh, get there for you 15 quid for thread tra crown thread chasers and 10 quid for a little 3 8 round skew crown tools again the whole lot there that you see there 60 quid so I can't complain of that can I I so say it would have been rude not to have bought something, especially at those prices. I don't think it'll ever happen again. They'll be way gone by now. Right, on to the project. Um, won't be any turning involved in this. It's um, an addition to the lathe I'm hoping to make. Uh, riser blocks. Uh, a few weeks ago I did a rather large... Um, hang on, I'll see if I've still got it. This thing, right, there you go. 18 inch diameter platter, which I had to swing the headstock round, make a real temporary tool rest, which wasn't too successful. So I thought, if ever I do a larger piece, and the lathe will take. I don't really want to make a freestanding tool rest. <clears throat> I haven't got the room to store it. It'd just be in the way because it's going to get used very rarely. And I keep moving it around and thinking, well, where can I put this? So I'm going to make some riser blocks instead. Now, probably about 50%, if not more, of the lathes that everybody uses are this lathe. This is the Axminster version, but most people, or a lot of people, they've got them in different colours with different badges on. Delta, SIP, etc. Drapers, I think they do one. All different makes all over the world. They're basically this lathe, different colour, different badge on. So, that's my block of wood I'm going to use. I'm going to make a riser block for the headstock and a riser block for the tailstock. 
which will give me an extra two inches in height which will give me uh, nine inches to the center so there you go at least an 18 inch swing and that platter I did was just under 18 inches so I won't have to bother trying to turn the uh, headstock round so enough waffling <laughs> I've marked this out so I'm going to get it on the table saw now and cut a couple of blocks off it stock piece I'm going to concentrate on at the moment so I want to replicate the lathe bed so I just took a few measurements scored a line there and the same the other side out and that's got to be cut out you see that okay yep there you go now there's ways you can do this I've, I've got a router I can't be bothered to get it all out it's tucked away somewhere so I'm just going to do it on the table saw set the blade nice and narrow do those two cuts flip it round and take that longer cut off there and see what happens is to make the opposite on this side so I've got to cut out here it's for the tailstock to sit on so I'll just carry these lines through here and here mark it out and I'll just nibble away at it on the table saw now this is going to be difficult because I've just broke my tripod and uh, I can't hold it and measure everything and mark everything out at the same time till I've fathomed out where to put the camera. So uh, I'll just mark it up and then I'll get back to you. I believe I've got my camera mounted at the moment. <laughs> Let's just say selfie sticks and blocks of wood come in very handy. go so I've got to cut that out right see how I can set it up now Okay, right, with a bit of luck, this should fit on here. <laughs> Very rare I managed to do things first time, but still, we'll try it. And that, wow, what a lovely fit! Beautiful. Perfect. Well, well pleased with that, it's better than I thought. So now, the next thing is to uh, put a hole through it. The hole's drilled, that was easy enough. 
I've also took a little bit off with the uh, table saw again. It's just to house it, just to house the lock in place, makes it a nice, nice, tidy fit. Right, um, the bolt. Now on my lathe, that's the bolt. Uh, the bar, the locking bar, goes through there. It's like on a cam, slightly offset, and uh, that's what locks your tail and headstock into position. But you need to make that longer. So there's a number of ways of doing it. I've done it with some piece of wool thread, length of wool thread, cut some off to whatever length. Uh, two inches. I did that. I think. And get a nut, blah blah, that's it, easy, screw it up, you've got a longer bolt. Okay, now I would recommend that you use this um, bit of PTFE tape just to make sure it doesn't keep coming loose or some uh, thread lock, anything like that. Um, another way of doing it is get yourself some captive nuts which give you so twice the length about that long see but I haven't got any captive nuts it's just to give it extra thread length to go in in each end uh, so you can get two of the ordinary nuts weld them together <clears throat> another way get yourself a bolt that bolt weld the nut onto it on goes your all thread. Choices, loads of them. So, but I think the, the most straightforward way, I'm just using the one nut together, do it up. That'll do. That's that's how long I want it. Jobs are good. Already finished the one for the headstock as you can see it's all on in position locked in very nicely and all I've got to do now I love this new tripod did I say I uh, have to nip out and buy a new one the things we do for you <laughs> anyway I've just got to assemble this back onto the tail stock now which is there and the job's done I could be really fussy and playing it and paint it and but you know, it's it's just for a job at the end of the day. It's, it hasn't got to look decorative. You can do what you want with it. Pebble dash it if you want. <laughs> so that's it. Just got to assemble that now. Um, one quick thing. Depends how high you're going. But your tool rest banjo. If you've only got a short stem on your on your tool rests, it might not get up to the centre. Of your new height so you may have to make a little riser block for your tallest banjo as well same principle just a lot smaller hang on all assembled nicely on there got me 18 inch bowl plenty of food near, near enough an inch at the bottom there about three quarters of an inch so well pleased with that a little project that works very nicely it's only a lump a couple of lumps of wood uh, a little bit of time cutting a piece of bar through that that's all it is really uh, yeah so onwards and upwards see you soon for the next one everybody bye for now <laughs>